everyone. Big news from Sony. The A7 and the A7R have been announced. This has been rumored for ages. I've been getting people posting more and more in the last couple of days about this. But personally, I don't like to follow the rumors until things actually come out. But here it is. It's no longer a rumor. And why am I showing you this on Adorama? Well, I went to the Sony Australia website and they still don't have the cameras listed. So, you know, local manufacturers sometimes get pissy that I'm supporting or showing products from overseas. But, you know, overseas is where I get sent the press releases from. Australia's always late, even though it's within our time zone normally that they're released and it's midnight in America. America's always on the ball. So, Adorama, you were the first to send me a press release that this was available, so here we are. The two cameras that they've released, uh, looks like the body is the same, it's just a different guts inside them, and they're a full frame interchangeable mirrorless camera. So people have been saying for ages that Sony were going to go fully mirrorless on their, not, you know, well, their, their lineup. Um, so they've been doing the translucent uh, in the past, and now they're going to a full mirrorless. Um, one is a 24 megapixel sensor at 1698 so a few hundred dollars more than, say, the uh, Olympus OMDEM1. Um, and then they've got a 36.3, they're calling it, uh, megapixel uh, that has no low pass filter. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's the exact same sensor that's in the D800E. Could be Sony and Nikon have shared sensors before but they've still had different results from them because of the rest of the way that the system was engineered. But let's just jump in and, we'll, oh, and it's worth noting, it's an extra 600 bucks between those two models. So let's jump in on the higher spec one, the A7R. Now I have to say, I had my money on that Fuji would be the first to bring out a full frame interchangeable mirrorless, but here we go, Sony has done it and why not? So it's interesting time. At one time, people are wanting to go smaller form factor and mirrorless is getting popular, but there's still hordes of people who want to go full frame. And it's an interesting trade-off because you get something like even a micro four-thirds camera, and once you get a decent 2.8 lens on there, all of a sudden it's not compact anymore. You look at the Sony NEX cameras already with a big lens on them or a lens with an adapter, and it's like this big lens with a tiny little camera as a lens cap on the back of it. But so be it, the lenses are still going to need to be really big for a full frame sensor like this one. Looking through some of the specs, it's got a 2.4 million uh, uh, viewfinder, the electronic viewfinder. So that's really, really high resolution and it's got Wi-Fi, it's got um, the hot shoes, the normal one on there. Um, it's got the latest Exmor sensor. So it'll take all of the E-mount lenses and of course the, the G range as well and you'll be able to use all their other lenses via an adapter. The rear screen is 3 inch, 1.2 million dots. I always wonder why a 3 inch one is 1.2 million dots but then the viewfinder is 2.4 million. That's just exponentially more concentrated pixels. I, mean, I guess because your eyes that much closer to it but seems like they could be doing even higher resolution rear screens these days. 14-bit raw output, that's a biggie, that's fantastic. Uh, three different formats for video shooting, including uncompressed HDMI out, that's great. And don't get thrown off by the 4K reference here. This doesn't do 4K video, it's just saying that it'll throw out an 8 megapixel image for 4K TVs that's um, optimized to show on those kind of a screen. So if you're doing slideshows and you're stuck in the 70s, then that could be something for you. Um, and on and on it goes. Have a little look through the tech specs. Sense I already mentioned, still sticking with the Memory Stick Pro Duo cards, whatever, and hey, uh, SDHD, SDHC, that's right. Huge resolution, uh, maximum is 7360 by 4912. There are all the different video formats there, up to 28 megabytes per second. That's not too shabby. Let's have a look. NTSC, of course, RAW, JPEG, 100% viewfinder coverage. You'd expect that with EVF. 25-point contrast autofocus detection. Have to wait and see how that actually is. Focus sensitivity to 20 EV. Let's have a look. What is it? giving us in terms of ISO 100 to 25,600 down to 50 and up to 
Up to, up to, okay, that is the up to, 25,600. The auto is 100 to 6,400. 1,200 zone metering. You know, this is all numbers. Until we see how it actually performs, who knows? But what I'm interested in, here we go. Shutter speed, it goes up to an 8,000th of a second, down to a 30 seconds. And what is our flash sync speed? Mm, doesn't seem to tell us here, unfortunately. Well, that's an interesting one. I might just do a little search for that. I'll be right back. Surprising, just had a little search around. Um, not surprising, DP Review got their hands on it before everyone else again. Surprisingly, they don't mention the sync speed either. And surprisingly, gosh, look at it once you put the grip on it. Ugly. Talk about being small anymore. That's, uh, to be honest, it's... It's a bit like that Leica S2, it's just so big and boxy, it'll appeal to some people, but I reckon that looks pretty naff, to be honest. But jumping back to the camera itself, no doubt this is going to be a big seller. It's kind of in between the, um, you know, the A99 design and the RX1 design, it's got the pentaprism look there. Um... Interesting. I would really love to test one out. I'll be um, hitting up my different contacts to see if I can get a hold of one of these to test out. I'm close to ordering myself an Olympus EM-1. Who knows? Maybe this could hold me back. I do own some Olympus lenses, which would kind of push me in that direction, but we'll see how we go. Leave me any thoughts. Who do you think is going to be next with full-frame uh, interchangeable lenses in this kind of part of the market? What do you think of the pricing, and what do you think of the specs? Is it something that you're considering? Let us know. We'll see you soon with more photo news and reviews.